Today I'm going to try to move one step closer to understanding why anybody makes or anybody watches unboxing videos. To do that, I'm going to do an unboxing video. So today I am going to re-unbox my Christmas present from KNF Concept. Before I start showing off my Christmas present and explaining how cool it is, uh, I want to thank my Patreon supporters. Thank you so much, guys. I really, really appreciate you. Uh, I'm a little concerned that uh, some new rules uh, concerning advertising are going to uh, negatively impact the tiny bit of income I make from those, uh, from those sources. So uh, yeah, it's gonna be a, a, tough, uh, a tough transition, but uh, your, your help is what keeps this thing going. So thank you very much, I do appreciate you. This is the box. It's the seven in one, 100 millimeter by 100 millimeter square filter set. And this is it out of the box, unboxed. Okay, I still am no closer to understanding why anybody would want to see that. I could just have started here and you'd have known it came out of a box, right? I think KNF Concept sent this to me for Christmas because they wanted me to eat my words from a few months earlier when I had declared the magnetic filter system, their nano coated magnetic filter system to be one of the best I had ever used for the price. This set changes uh, everything. Uh, it really does. This is a whole new level of pro gear. Since Christmas, when I opened this, we have had precious few pretty days to get out and take pictures. And I have gone out and taken pictures, but I always figured there'd be another day that I could actually record the video. Well, it's been raining for a week and there hasn't been a day for me to get outside to record this video. So we're doing it indoors. You're just gonna have to use your imagination and I'll show you the pictures that I took and, and that'll be that. Fair enough. I have used this exclusively. I haven't put another filter on since getting these. Partly because I was evaluating them for this review and partly because I absolutely love them. So these are square filters. This is a different kind of filter than the round filters that we've been talking about in the past. What is a square filter and why is, why is that important? Uh, why is this something that pros will spend a lot of money on? Well, the, the advantage of using a square filter is they're much larger than the round filters and they significantly decrease the likelihood of having vignetting in your um, wide angle shots. It's really as simple as that. Now, most of the round filters, if you upsize them a, a little bit and use a step up ring, you can get the round filter out of the way most of the time. But when you're shooting with uh, really wide lenses, and I was using an 11 to 16 crop frame camera lens with these, uh, a Tokina, actually a beautiful uh, lens. I've had it for years and years, and I, I still love to take it out to go do landscapes. And this covered perfectly well without any hint of uh, a vignette. So the purpose of the square filter is not just to get coverage, though it is designed to get out in front of even a very large wide angle lens. Uh, it's, it's more than just that. Because these are square, it's possible to do things with the filters that you couldn't do with a round filter. One of the key things that you can do with a square filter or a rectangular filter that you can't do with a round one is have a graduation. And uh, a graduated filter will have one half of the, uh, the filter that is clear and the other half that is darkened. The point, of course, being that you can put the filter across the horizon and, and block the light where it's bright and let it through where it's not. And filters uh, like that uh, come in all different sizes and types. KNF actually has a wide range 
of uh, different graduated neutral density filters. One of the features that uh, graduated filters have will be a, a different uh, amount of spread between the dark and the light. There will be hard filters, which have basically a line between the dark and the light. And then they'll have soft ones, which give you a, a, a gradual um, transition from dark to light. And KNF has 100 by 150 filters uh, in all of those so that you can get really any landscape filter you want to fit in this system. This is a, a case that clips onto the otherwise square glass. Uh, and that's how you buy them, as square pieces of glass that are 100 by 100 millimeters. And uh, you, you slide these little uh, protectors onto the edges, and this is what makes them uh, light tight when they're on the, on the system. But let me show you the system. And to say, that, to say that this is a step above what I was expecting is, is an understatement if ever there was one. This has the feel of a very expensive uh, filter holder. Now there are filter holders out there like the one from Wine Country that, that cost thousands of dollars, I think, and they're made of wood and they're just perfect uh, pieces of engineering. And then there are the practical everyday ones like Lee filters has a very similar type of holder to this. Uh, but this one is beautifully made and well engineered. There's a couple of things about it I'm not super crazy about, but by and large, it's perfect. The, the kit that I'm using here comes with, let me show you the case here. It comes with uh, three filters, three square filters, plus the filter holder, plus a circular polarizing filter, which is a key part of using a filter system like this. Um, it also brings you a selection of different um, adapter rings. If you were to buy the Lee system and uh, you needed to get an adapter ring for it, it will cost you $74. I checked on, on uh, B&H today. Uh, these, these rings uh, are uh, expensive. If you lose your ring from K&F, you can get a replacement for uh, just 20 bucks, but they're very nicely made. I think they're aluminum, uh, but they're very rigid, very stiff, and uh, they have lovely accurate threads on them. Uh, but that's for attaching it to your camera. And then the uh, filter holder, of course, attaches to the adapter. Uh, a couple of things that uh, are worth noting. First of all, it will take two separate filters, uh, as opposed to some systems which will take more than that. If you have ever done a lot of landscape photography using filters like this, you'll realize that, that four filters, that's three square filters and a CPL, is an awful lot of glass for your uh, light to pass through. So I'm not bothered by the fact that it has just the two slots. In fact, the, the, the way I use filters, I may at the most use, use three. I'll use the CPL and then possibly a, uh, a two-stop ND filter if it's a bright, uh, low contrast day. And then a graduated neutral density uh, as my third filter if I'm trying to separate sky and, and land. The device has a, a lovely locking uh, clip system for holding on to, to the camera. It's got a little spring. This is the one thing I don't like. The spring feels a little bit cheap. You know what I mean? Kind of, it, it should be more resistance than that. I may replace the spring in here at some point. Well, you can't, that doesn't come off. There's a, there's a little ridge there and the filter with this piece facing you, will go underneath the ridge, and then you just snap the filter in like that, the adapter in like that. Now, the adapter will turn, and this is important because if you want your, your graduated filter, for example, to, to follow a contour that's at an angle, you would need to tip your holder at an angle to, to match that. Uh, so that's good. You want to be able to do that, but you also want to be able to lock it in place. And that's what this orange knob is for. 
So once you get to, to where you, you're going, you can lock it in place and now it doesn't turn. Always turn one of these clockwise to the left as you're looking at the camera. Uh, that tightens the ring onto the lens instead of loosening it. Let's look now at the, uh, at the circular polarizer. This is what they call the CPL bin. This little gap is where the circular polarizing filter goes. Now it'll only go one way. If I try to put it in backwards, this thing won't close properly. And there is print across the top that says filter in the wrong way around or something like that. It says CPL error and it won't close properly. So you have to put it in with the flat flange away from you. And that is, of course, so that the gear will work when you're turning it. And then it will clip into place. It won't close if you have it backwards, which is a nice touch. Now, once it's in, turning the filter is no longer this reaching around to the front of the camera. You just use the, the, the thumb screw on the side. And it will each uh, turn of the screw is about a quarter turn of the filter. So it's geared in there. And uh, this is how you would set your CPL in position. There isn't a way to lock it that I have found. Um, so I'm guessing there isn't a way to lock it, which maybe they can do uh, on the next iteration. It would be nice to be able to have it hold in position. Uh, once you've done that, you're ready to start adding your filters. So the kit that I got for Christmas consists of three filters. There is an ND8, which is a three-stop filter, an ND64, which is a six-stop filter, pretty dark, and then an ND1000, which is a 10-stop, big stopper filter. This is the kind of filter you would use to really slow water down to a creamy blur. And um, though I'm holding up the ND64 and talking about it as if it's the 1000, this is the 1000. Very dark indeed. Typically, the very best glass is used to make these square filters. Uh, it's something to do with the process, how they float glass when they're, when they're making it, that the very premium stuff is uh, the stuff that's used to make these square filters. And these particular ones have multiple coatings. They have 28 layers of nano coating, and they really are incredibly resistant to, to fluids and uh, dirt. I haven't actually got any dirt on them, but I did put water on them to see what would happen. And uh, it just runs off. Um, I, I wanted to, to do a demonstration of pouring some horrible stuff over these, but um, I, I don't know how to get the, the frames off and I don't want to damage them. Um, so I'll, I'll keep trying to do that, but I, there must be a way. They feel like they're well and truly locked though. Anyway, I couldn't get them apart uh, and I didn't want to pour evil stuff over here and it get down in the cracks. Now, these particular filters in this set, the seven piece set, uh, are made of Japanese optical glass and it's really good. There isn't any distortion uh, at loss of resolution. Uh, with the filters, even with a stack of filters in place. Um, there is a color cast. Uh, it's not that bad. Uh, in fact, it's very trivial. It's, it's nothing like the color cast you get with a Lee Big Stopper, for example, which is blue, blue, blue. Uh, this is a very, very subtle magenta. Uh, it's hardly noticeable. In fact, you have to kind of look for it. There's a big misunderstanding about filters and color casts. Uh, it is commonly believed, I think, that a filter with a color cast is a cheaper filter uh, or a worse filter in some way. But the fact is that any ND filter has a color cast. It may be subtle or it may be dramatic, but they all have them. I've never seen one that doesn't. And the reason makes a whole lot of sense. The way these things work is they block some of the light. So the only way that you could have a completely neutral filter would be either if it didn't stop any of the light, in which case it wouldn't be an ND filter, 
or it was able to stop all of the wavelengths proportionately so that the light coming through was exactly the same as the light going in. And that just doesn't happen. So if you're using any kind of neutral density filter, you are going to have some color cast. The question is, how do you deal with it? And there are two ways that you can deal with color cast from your, from your filters. The first is shoot in RAW. If you shoot JPEGs using something like this and you need to correct for a slight color cast, when you use a JPEG, that is a permanent uh, destructive process on a compressed image. What might happen is when you uh, remove a certain group of colors through a white balance correction, and you can end up dramatically changing the color and you can't get it back. So shoot raw. If you're using these, you should be shooting raw anyway, but with, uh, with raw uh, images, you can white balance these when you get back to Lightroom, for example, and correct the whole thing, remove whatever tiny bit of color cast there is. I have used cheap filters, uh, mostly just testing them out. Uh, I'm not gonna mention any brand names, but I've used some that were almost unfixable in Lightroom because you'd fix one hue and another one would appear. Um, and it's very frustrating to deal with that. The higher quality ones, while they'll still have a color cast, it'll usually be in one color and it will be easy to fix. And that's the way it is with these. It's one color, magenta, very slight, very easy to fix. These particular filters uh, have a very low reflectivity and a very high transmittance. They go kind of together. The reflectivity is how much of the light is bounced off the front of these filters. And it's very low on the order of one and a half to two percent. But the transmittance is a measurement of the optical density. The more optically dense the filter is, the less light that gets through. But the relationship is not linear. It's a base 10 logarithmic relationship. So a, an optical density of 0 0.3 corresponds to 50% or half of the light getting through. At an optical density of 1, only 10% of the light gets through. And at an optical density of 3, only 0.1%, one tenth of 1% of the light gets through. The glass used in these filters also actively blocks infrared, which uh, allows for a more accurate um, color reproduction. There are a couple of touches on the actual holder itself that I love. One of them is they have what are called lint grommets, lint grommets. I love the name too. These are little strips of lint around the outside and the, the glass of the filter sits right against that and that prevents light leak. Light leak is one of the reasons that uh, some of the cheaper uh, square filter systems are not worth having. Because if you get light leak, it's just like in macro photography, it's gonna take away your contrast uh, it's going to leave you with a hazy image. So this is important, the fact that it is uh, light tight. Uh, I've already uh, explained it holds two filters. Uh, I don't see any reason why you couldn't add a third holder if you needed it. They just screw in. But uh, So of course, the idea is that you would use the circular polarizing filter to knock out any reflections or to deepen the color of the sky or to get better contrast in clouds. Uh, yet the, uh, the neutral density filters themselves are either to slow down your shutter speed or for a, a creative effect if you're trying to block some of the light but not all of it, in which case you'd be using one of the longer uh, 100 by 150 graduated filters. They even have a reverse graduated filter uh, that has an area in the center that is dark and it lightens towards the top and lightens towards the bottom. It's a, uh, an evening kind of uh, filter. Uh, that's nice. I, I'm definitely interested in getting my hands on one of those at some point. Hint, hint, Mr. K, Mr. F, or Mrs. One thing I didn't mention, the diameter of the CPL and the, the part of the filter that is open to light is 91 millimeters. 
91 millimeters is huge, especially when you think about the, the likely the biggest uh, uh, adapter ring you're gonna use is an 82. So 91 gives you lots of freedom. And uh, in addition, it's thin. And that's the other part of this. If, if it's thick, then it doesn't matter how big it is, you're, a bit, you're gonna cut some of the light off. If the profile is very thin, and the diameter is very large, it pretty much guarantees you're not gonna get uh, vignetting. And that's what you have here. 14 millimeters thick, but 91 millimeters in diameter. They're good numbers to know. That will compare favorably to any kit on the market. What about price? These are not cheap filters. This particular set with the four glass filters and the holder costs 260 bucks, which, is a lot of money for filters, unless you are looking at comparable filters on the market. Lee makes a set that has four glass filters and a holder uh, and a case and a CPL. And uh, that set on B&H today was $880. This is 260 for essentially the same pieces. So, it is expensive, but it is a bargain. The filters themselves, including the German optical glass ones, go anywhere from 130 to 210, which is absolutely on a par with all the, the high-end uh, filters out there, and it's a lot less than some. I've used a lot of different filters over the years, and, and these are high-quality filters. They're, they're better than anything I used to be able to shoot with but I had occasionally borrowed filters that uh, were on this kind of level. They are absolutely distortion free, which is key. If you don't need everything, you could get like the holder and a CPL and an ND filter of, of some description, it'd be about 130 bucks, which is about half the price of most of the filters out there, most of the square filters. They actually do make uh, the frame holders, because when you buy your glass filters, the graduated neutral densities, for example, they will come as a piece of glass. And by the way, to get your filters out, there is a, a ribbon that you pull that raises them up. Beautiful, very tasteful. So the, um, the surround to the, to the filter actually does come off, even though I can't get it off and you can buy replacements for these if you break them, like I'm going to do getting this off eventually. So this is a beautiful system. It was a real treat to get this from KNF for Christmas. Other than maybe COVID, this was the second best Christmas present that I got this year. Now, um, I wanna tell you about something that I discovered during my research for this. I was reading about KNF and about this filter set and about some of the awards that it had won. And it won an award from the Red Dot Design Organization and also from IF Design. Now, I had never heard of either of these organizations. And I'll be honest, I didn't know companies like this existed. And what they do is they uh, evaluate new products, either new products that are ready to go to market or, or concepts that may or may not ever make it to market. And what they do is they award prizes. I'm sure it's a money related thing, but um, the, the uh, designs that are felt to be the most creative or interesting or promising win prizes and are showcased on the website. I say all that because I made the mistake of going to both of their websites. Uh, if Design, uh, which is my favorite of the two, and Red Dot Design. And if you ever want to know what is coming three years from now, if you want to see what people are uh, inventing and, and, and producing, 
you've got to check that site out. I could not tear my eyes away from it. The categories include things like architecture, habitat, public spaces, sustainability, energy, flora and fauna, life science, bionics, fashion, childhood, education, games, sports, travel, safety, security, bathroom hygiene is a little worrying. There's not a whole lot of that innovation that's getting anywhere near me, I can tell you that. Lighting, furnishings, office furnishings, interior design, culinary, domestic aid, wearables, entertainment. It goes on and on and on. These are the categories. I challenge you to go to the uh, red dot and the if site and just have a quick look and be done in five minutes and then get out. It's just fascinating to see uh, all the stuff that the creative people are coming up with. I love that. I love that. So there you have it. The square filter system, the 100 millimeter square filter system from KNF Concept. If you're like me and uh, you go out to shoot landscape photography only every once in a while and you want to be using the best gear that you can afford, these KNF Concept filters are as good as any that I have used, and they cost a fraction of the price, about a fourth of the price. I'll put a link in the show notes so that you can go to KNF's shop, and there will be a discount for you, uh, as always. I'm sorry we didn't get to go out and do this outdoors today, but it is still pouring down rain outside. So yeah, it's not gonna happen tomorrow either. But I will get out in the near future. I'll take these with me and we will do a, a shoot together. I'll be back in a few days with something else. I know not what. Until then, stay safe and be well. Mm -hmm.